Good afternoon. My name is Alicia Lofthouse, and this is Free at Last Ministries, and welcome to my home. Let me make sure I have this thing turned all the way up. Nope, sure don't. Okay, now can you hear me? <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll repeat it. My name is Alicia Lofthouse, and this is Free at Last Ministries, and uh, welcome to my home. I hope I got a good message for you today. And um, anyways, before we start, I always like to pray. We have some people in the hospital. We have some people who are sick. We have some people who are needing bills paid. We have people with car trouble. We have people with trouble with their kids. So there's always prayer requests coming in. And I promise to try to reach each and every one of them. If I don't remember them, God does. I got my little mosquito band on. Let me take it off. Okay, anyways, let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord God, as I anoint myself, Lord God, I'm anointing everybody that's out there, Lord, that everyone that's watching, Lord, that oil was for them, God. We just love and appreciate you, Lord God. Oh, Father, oh, Father, I love you, Lord God, I love you. I ask that you touch each and every soul, Lord God, each one that needed prayer, God, each one that needs a miracle, each one that needs a financial miracle, each one that needs a healing, each one that needs just correction in their home. God, a marriage healed, Lord God, a friendship healed, a family healed. Lord God, oh God, just bring peace back to us, Lord God. Father, help us, Lord God, with this message. I pray that you just reach out and to that uh, phone and just everyone that's listening, Lord God, that you anoint their ears and anoint their hearts and anoint their minds. Give them comprehension. Let them be able to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church, Lord God. I love you, God. I love you. Please, Father, help us to hear this message today. I love you with all my heart. I give you all the honor, the glory, and praise. Please touch my boss. Please touch Brother Kerry Cowell, Lord God. Bless him and Sister Evadine both, Father. I just love you. I love you. I love you. And I thank you so much. Touch my brother Joey, Lord God. Continue to heal his body, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you, God. We just ask that you just, just be with us today, Lord God. Oh, God, let us be with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So anyways, um, I'm not going to sing a song or nothing because um, I like the message. So we are going to go to Luke, Luke 24, and we're going to start at verse 10. Got your Bibles? You ready? Okay. Verse 10. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna... Mary, the mother of James, which was the mother of Jesus, but they couldn't say that anymore. James is the one that wrote in the book of James in the Bible. That was her son also. And uh, so was Jude. Jude wrote in the back of the Bible also. Yep. But anyways, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Jesus had just risen from the grave. And the women went to go anoint his body and... Uh, Anyways, they came back telling them, he's not there. He's not there. The stone was rolled away, and he's not there. So the disciples, they're all, you know, trying to figure out what happened to him then. Jesus tried to tell them again and again and again. said, um, uh, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Well, he had to go. And so anyways, uh. They didn't remember that. All they knew right then was their Messiah was dead. They didn't know about him being alive. Jesus gave all kinds of things like uh, uh, the sign of Jonah, three days in the belly, you know, three days in the tomb. Uh, even when he told Peter plainly that he was going to die, Peter said, uh, I'll die with you. Uh, and, you know, anyways, so here they are. Jesus arose and the women are coming to tell the disciples about it and it said um verse 11 says and their words seemed to them like idle tales you know women are always trying to tell tattle tales and gossip and all that stuff well i guess they didn't believe them and um so their their words seemed like idle tales and they did not believe them but peter arose and ran to the tomb and stooping down he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves and he departed, 
marveling to himself at what had happened. What happened? What happened? Peter is trying to figure out what happened. Okay, so uh, the road to Emmaus. It says, now behold, two of them, two of the disciples are traveling down the road of the, uh, the, to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. Uh, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Jesus was walking right by them and they did not know him. To them, Jesus was dead. You know, so Jesus asked them, says, uh, What's going on? And they start telling him, are you a stranger in Israel that you don't know what's going on? You didn't hear about the, the prophet. They were calling him a prophet. You didn't hear about the prophet and, and all that was done. But anyways, um, so as they kept telling him, and tell, Jesus was letting them go ahead and tell them their story. You know, everybody got a story, but is your story the right one? You know, which story are you telling? Anyways, um, this message is called, do you recognize, do you really recognize Jesus? So, uh, let's see, let's see. So then it says, um, and certain of those who were with us, they're still talking to Jesus in the 24th, 24th verse. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as it, as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O oh, fools, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. You're slow to hear. You know, you hear the message, but you really didn't comprehend it. You didn't understand it. You know, you were thinking about something else or doing something else or playing with your phone or looking at somebody or whispering to somebody, but you didn't hear the message that Jesus wanted you to hear. He was talking to the disciples all through the Bible. He was talking to the disciples, well, all through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And um, he kept trying to tell them what was going to happen. They saw, oops, my glasses. Oh, okay. So, anyways, um, he said, Oh, foolish heart, uh, ought you not to have believed all that the prophets have spoken? Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Jesus suffered a lot being out there, you know. Uh, was ridiculed by the priests. Uh, people didn't believe him. His own people turned their backs on him. He went there to help them, to, to do miracles for them. But it said that just a few miracles were done because they didn't believe him. They said, isn't that Mary's son? Isn't that Joseph's son? You know, so he said uh, he left because of their unbelief. And anyways, you can't just say you, you know Jesus, that you believe in Jesus, because if you believed in Jesus, you would be living for Jesus. You would live every single day like it was the last day before Jesus came back. Then they drew near to the village where they were going. He indicated that he would have, would have gone farther, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. That's why we pray before we eat, so that God can bless the food. Um, then their eyes were open and they knew him. And guess what? He vanished out of their sight. And they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road? And while he opened the scriptures to us, he opened the scriptures starting from Moses on down, you know, to that moment. And, uh, Anyways, it's like they listen, but they do not hear. Jesus said, you, you worship me with your uh, mouth, but your hearts are far from me. 
He wants someone that wants to be close to him, that fellowship with him, minister for him, you know, do things for him. To prove that you really do love him, that you really do believe in the Bible, in the words of the scripture. Okay. It says, they all talked with him, walked with him, ate with him. They saw him perform miracles by the thousands. People were fed, people were healed, and delivered from demonic forces. They saw the dead raised, and the storm cease just at the sound of his voice. Woo! Hallelujah! But they did not recognize him as the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. They didn't recognize him. They were all calling him a prophet. You know, they called him, um, uh, what was it, rabbi, which means teacher. You know, but nobody recognized him as the Messiah, as the Son of God, even though he kept telling them, uh, you don't know my father. My father is not from here. And he said, uh, I and my father are one. So he's claiming to be the Son of God, but nobody's listening except the, the priest because they want to kill him. And so they're looking for something to kill him with, you know, and they're saying he made himself the son of God. And so, you know, they wanted to kill him and he, they turned a lot of people against him. The priests turned their people against him. The same ones that Jesus fed, the same ones that were healed, you know, well, I'm hoping it wasn't the ones he healed, but people are, anyways, I was like that too. So I can't blame anybody. Jesus will blame you. Okay, um, they did not recognize him as a Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Jesus was angry, for although they saw the miracles, they never heard what he was trying to teach them. Oh, fools! Oh, fools! Slow to understand. Slow, slow, slow. You know, people don't read their Bibles because they don't understand it. They don't comprehend it. It's boring to them. When I first got saved back in 1992, I never went to school. My highest grade was, I think, sixth grade. But anyways, uh, I wanted so much to know who Jesus was. Why did he keep saving me? Why did he keep bringing me from the dead? Why would he let me die? Anyways, um, so when I was reading the Bible, I could not understand it. And I prayed. I saw in a place when, in there where it said, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask, and I will give it to him, liberally. That means he'll give you as much knowledge and wisdom as you need, because he wants us to fellowship with him. He wants us to come to him with all our troubles. He doesn't want us going to the neighbors or to, you know, people who's going to gossip about you and say, did you hear about that one right there? You know, he said, cast all your cares on me. Because I care for you. He cares for you. Those people don't care about you. They just want to hear a story that they can carry to somebody else. I don't know why my phone does that, but I can see that I'm speaking, but my words are kind of going slower than me. They always do. <sighs> Water. The best thing to drink. Anyway, so it says, uh, you know, Jesus was angry and he was telling them. And then he had to tell them the scriptures all over again. These men, you know, were raised with the word of God. They were raised in the laws of Moses. You know, they had all kinds of laws and they had to memorize them. Moses said to write them on the eyelids, you know, and the... Uh, Put them in your heart. I think that was in Psalms. But it says, uh, we are supposed to know everything about him. Those Jews were supposed to know everything about him. But they never got to comprehend him. Like in the wilderness, they constantly complained. There's no water. There's no food. He just delivered them from Egypt with mighty miracles. They saw all the Egyptians buried in the sea and and. They're still complaining. They didn't want to recognize God. That's why in Samuel, when Samuel was the prophet there, they went to him and they said, give us a king. And he said, you got a king. It's God. And they said, no, no, no. We want someone that we can see like the other nations. They have kings and we 
excuse me, we want to see our king. Because they couldn't see Jesus. They didn't, I mean, God. They didn't want to see God. They didn't want to fellowship with God. They didn't want to have to go and ask him. They wanted someone that they can see. A warrior to stand up and fight for them. They didn't realize that God was fighting for them. He knocked out armies without them even raising a sword. And they could not see that. They could not comprehend that. The Bible says uh, that we have the... Oh, what is it? It says, but denying the power thereof. That's what we have. We have Jesus in our hearts, but we're denying the power thereof. We're denying that Jesus can heal. We're denying that Jesus can save a marriage, that Jesus can heal a home, that Jesus can get you a job, the one you want, the one you, you know, what he wants. His will is what he wants for you. We should desire his will because our will is always, the wrong thing. At least mine always were. But anyways, uh, God wants a relationship with us. Today, Brother Jake was preaching on that. And he was saying that Jesus came so that because from Adam and Eve, when Adam and Eve sinned, it broke the, the bondage and we were separated from God. We had to kill animals. Well, we did it. They killed animals for sacrifices. They had to have a blood sacrifice in order for their sins to be forgiven. But God got tired of all that blood. And he had a plan from the beginning. As soon as they sinned uh, in the Garden of Eden, God already had a plan. He said, let us let us make them in our image. Let us do this. Let us do this and let us do that. It was Jesus and the Holy Ghost that were there since the beginning of time. Before the beginning of time, he was always, uh, yesterday, today, and forever, he's always been the same. I don't care what Darwin says. I did not come from no monkey. I came from an almighty God. Woo! Hallelujah. And I'm going home to, to my home in heaven. But anyways, um, so I prayed and I prayed and I asked God for wisdom. And God gave me wisdom. My mother, before I even got saved, her and my dad gave me a, a concordance, a Strong's concordance, a big old book. I only went to sixth grade and I didn't know what that thing was. But God gave me wisdom and I learned how to use it with the Bible. And I had more comprehension and it brought more wow to me you know i was like i didn't ever know that you know i didn't know any of the stories in the bible but i learned how to read them and to comprehend the words and to understand them and i got hungry i want to see what the rest of it was i couldn't stop reading my bible every chance i got to sit down from my patients when they were resting or in bed i read my bible i couldn't put it down um but anyways uh Okay, they believed in the miracles, but not on the Son of God. They lost the one whom they believed was the Messiah. When he died and was buried, they felt that all hope was lost. Isn't that terrible? You think that your loved one died and so now all hope is lost. No, it's not. You still got Jesus. There will always be Jesus. There will always be the word of God. And that's what he tries to encourage you to get back the word of God. Wipe it off, you know, get it out of that shelf and wipe it off and open it up and read it daily. That's your spiritual daily bread to read that. Excuse me, I'm so thirsty. It is hot outside. I got my sweet friend, Brenda. I call her my other daughter. She's here all the time. But Brenda's here with me. What are you doing in the corner? Oh, you silly thing. She's all the way in the corner. Anyways, um, you know, that's, that's what we're supposed to do is go out and win souls. That's how I got Brenda. I've known her for about nine years. About 11 years. And uh, I met her in a dollar store. And just because I talked to her and her her daughter, Tiffany, you know, she liked me. And I liked her and the kids. And we just became friends. And I was bringing them to church and to church. And she's still in church. You know, we all make mistakes, but we all come back to God. Anyways, um, 
They lost the one whom they loved. They lost their Messiah. When he died and was buried, they felt that all hope, all hope was lost. And when he walked right beside them after his death, they could not recognize him. Because they couldn't recognize him while he was there talking with them. You know, doing miracles and speaking to them about heaven and his father. You know, all of that stuff. That To them, it was a good story, you know. One we could share with our kids. It, he wasn't giving a law. He gave one law and it was a, a new commandment I give unto you. That ye love one another as I love you. And he was talking about that, you know. We do some crazy things. We do some bad things. So I know that when I was in sin, I know nobody could stand to be around me. All I wanted was some drugs. All I did was beg my family for money, you know, and then for them to see me the way in that condition, they didn't want to be around me. I always was looking for love and never knew that it was right here all the time. But anyways, I heard about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus. These disciples and the women that followed and ministered to them, they heard the stories, but they didn't recognize that he really was the son of God, especially when he died, when he was beaten, crucified and died. There was the doubt, you know, I guess he wasn't the Messiah, but we sure do love him. We sure do miss him, but he walked out of the tomb. I mean, he raised himself from the dead. He said, my father gives me that power. My father gave me the power to lay my life down. And he gave me the power to pick it back up. Woo! Hallelujah! I just love the Bible. I love the word of God. So anyways, um, and just like the world today, there is so much technology and so much entertainment. And so many things, so many inventions that you get caught up with, that you have lost sight of the Son of God. Your eyes are cast on all these other things, things that, new cars that have all these gadgets in it. You have, uh, uh, what do they call it, vacuum cleaners that run all by themselves. You don't even have to get up off the couch. You have a, a machine that you can talk to to turn down the radio, turn on the TV, do this. Lazy. Jesus said those are slothful people. Do you ask that thing, that machine, to read the word of God to you? Oh, my goodness, my goodness. When I was in the world, I wanted nothing but this. I wanted someone to love me, to understand me, to comprehend me, why I did the things that I did, how I got to the place that I got. You know, and Jesus came and he was there for me every single minute, even when I couldn't see him. He was there. When I couldn't feel him, he was there. He was walking right beside me and I didn't recognize him. But I know now that he's there and I trust him. I trust him. But I had to go through a lot of battles to get to that place to believe that he really was there for me, that he loved me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. People try all kinds of things to bring pleasure to their lives. The TV and internet is filled with nothing but filth. Those sitcoms, not sitcoms, they're sitcoms because there's so much sickness in it. And you watch that stuff right in front of your children. Why? Why do you let your children do that? Then they grow up to be just like them. These young girls want to look like those models and the movie stars that you watch on TV. They see all these women. They want to imitate them. But there's some girls that are a little chubby and they can't get that figure. And so they're teased by other people, you know, and, and uh, we're just so materialized in this world that our kids can't live up to those standards. They can't live up to that expectations. And uh, they get disappointed and they hate themselves and they become mean and ugly to other people. And it's just pitiful. We have allowed our children to grow up like that. I mean, you know, like uh, when, 
When I was pregnant, we wore maternity clothes. I loved my maternity clothes. I loved being pregnant, you know, and um, guys still, never mind. <laughs> but anyways, now I see women out there with babies. Everywhere I go, I see women with showing the, the baby, you know. I mean, I thought it was a private thing. I mean, I like seeing the baby too, but I didn't know that the husbands would allow for their wives to be uh, stripped of their clothes like that. To reveal their uh, child to the world. That's like saying, look world, here's another child for you to abuse, you know. And I just, I just can't see it. I can't comprehend that. But that's what you all got. I guess that's what you're happy with. Because nobody reads the Bible. Where the Bible says, buy it and sell it not. It says, uh, clothe yourself in white raiment. Clothe yourself. Not be naked. I got to read this one part. Oops, oops, oops. Okay, okay, okay. I have to get the third one. Sorry, I'm just trying to find something to read to you. Uh, well, I wasn't prepared for it. I wasn't planning on reading it, so I guess I won't. But anyways, it was talking about that. Jesus himself, the revelator, was hearing the word of God. John the revelator, hearing him say that. He was saying uh, to uh, clothe yourself in white raiment. Cover up the nakedness of your sins. You know, don't let everybody see your sin. Don't let everybody see you. I'm not talking about how you dress and stuff. That's between you and God. He said dress in a modest apparel. But anyways, we'll get past that. People try all kinds of things to bring pleasure to their lives. The TV, the internet, uh, sitcoms where you, they make you believe that living together is okay. Trying to be as sexy like the man on or woman on the who bears their body for you, and people lust at the ideal of doing the same. Our kids try to look like the ungodly movie stars, and they desire their lifestyles, and you cannot see. They are being trained for men to seduce them, and beat them, and sell them. People are taught by the TV to hate one another. Woo! Uh, you are taught by filthy, ungodly music to lust and drink and just have a good old time. You won't be having a good old time once you get in hell. They said there's a lot of good old boys in hell. I don't have to listen to someone to, for them to tell me that because I read the word of God and it tells me that. Okay, it says, now everywhere you turn, they are killing one another. And have the audacity, the nerve to blame God for it. They say, uh, where was Jesus when my son was killed? When my daughter committed suicide? Where was Jesus when my child was raped? He was right beside you. But you did not recognize him. Through all those things that made you turn from God. Satan lied to you. He's a deceiver and a liar. And he wants you to blame God for every single bad thing that happens in your life. Because you're blind to the truth. Jesus said, uh, the truth will set you free. But we're not free. People that are out there in sin are not free. The Bible says, uh, first John, it says, do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. Can you hear that? Can you comprehend that? That's the word of God. That's John, John, the revelator, John, the one that took care of Jesus's mother it says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, 
the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I don't have to listen to nobody. I do my own thing. Well, I want to be the boss when I get that job. Uh, pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The lust of the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. For all that is in the world uh, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. Do you not see that? Can you not see the world passing away? I mean, you're not listening to the Bible. You're not reading the Bible. You're listening to the news. You're listening to only what the news wants to put on there. Anyway. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, you hear that? He's talking to the little children, your little children. If you haven't received Christ as your Savior, you're a little children. You start out like a baby walking in a Christian faith. If you are a Christian and you're not walking by faith and you're not walking according to the law, not the law, uh, of the word of God, then you're still a child. I'm his children, all his children. But it said, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. It's the last hour, people. It's time for us to wake up. Stop, you know, messing with the flesh and the, the lust and the eyes and all that stuff. I got saved when I was 35 years old. So I can't tell somebody what to do with their life. I got a prison ministry for 25 years and I never asked them what they were locked up for because it didn't matter to me. I just wanted to show them the love of Jesus. I just wanted to read the word of God to them. I never condemned them. I never, you know, I wanted them to see Christ in me. I wanted to be that living example of Christ. And, uh, you know, if we don't have that living example of Christ, then... We're, we're walking, we're a walking dead tree. That's what we are. Cause we're not bearing any fruit. The Bible says the tree is known by the fruit they bear. Okay. Uh, do not be influenced by the desires of this world, but rather be encouraged by the power of his name. The power of his name, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, all demons have to flee. The Bible says at the end days that um, they're going to bow down before him. They have to bow at his feet. Like in the Bible, when those demon spirits, they would run to him and bow down at his feet. Have you come to torment us? You know, he says, shut up. Don't, don't speak. He had the authority over those demons and he still has that authority today. Um, be influenced and encouraged and strengthened by the power of God's word. The Bible, the Bibles will be taken from us one day, and I believe it won't be much longer. We had a Gideon today at our church and, uh, at Sister Judy's church, um, at the Lighthouse Church. And the Gideon was there and he was telling different stories, you know, about how those Gideon Bibles reach into the hearts of people and are passed on to others as a testimony of Christ, of the love of Christ, the mercies of Christ. And um, today, who has a Bible? You know, I don't see people carrying their Bibles no more. I don't see, you know, they say stand up. It's not just in my church. I'm talking about other churches that I go to. They say, stand for the word of God. And we stand for the word of God, but it meant for us to read along with it. Because you don't know if that preacher or pastor or uh, revival or whatever is missing a word or uh, saying it different. Like one time I was talking about Daniel coming from Babylon. He didn't come from Babylon. He came from Jerusalem going to Babylon. But I just kept saying Babylon. He came from Babylon. 
So if you don't know the word of God, you're going to believe that he came from Babylon. You know, we need to know the word of God, the truth. And the truth will set us free. Okay. Uh, they will be taken from us. And when you don't know the word of God, then God will not know you. When you believe that you will make heaven to live eternally with the one you had no time for. Let me repeat that. To think that you will live eternally with the one that you had no time for. The bride, the church will be taken away and you won't even know it until it's too late. Until it's too late. I, I don't want to do that. I always cry and tell God, take out the secrets in my heart. You know, reveal them to me that I can pray and get rid of it. You know, I'm not a perfect person. I make mistakes too. But I'm called to warn the wicked of the wicked ways. And that when I'm preaching to you, I'm listening. I had to study this before I preach it to you. And everything inside it was speaking to me. Do I recognize Christ? Do I know that he's really there? There were some times that I didn't believe it. There were some times that I felt like he left me. You know, like he didn't love me anymore. He didn't want nothing to do with me anymore. But that's not true. That's the lies from Satan himself. You know, people get sick and they get diseases and they lose their husbands or their wives and relationships go wrong and kids get killed and overdose and, you know, it's murdered. Babies get murdered and people wonder why didn't God do something about it? Why? You know why? Because we have free will we go and do whatever we want to do and god has to step back and say you're out of my hand i cannot protect you unless you're in my hand and that's where i'll protect you he will never leave you he will never forsake you he will never forget you but he will not go with you into the sin he won't do it and if you believe that he does then you're allowing Satan to, to be a liar and you're believing a lie. That's why you need to read the word of God. Preachers are everywhere trying to tell you that. Evangelists go to different parts of the world so that they can preach the gospel to somebody, to win a soul, to win a soul. Because I'm telling you, if God comes, this world is getting wicked. It's been wicked, but it's getting more wicked than it ever has been before. We have tried to tell you. We have tried to uh, minister to you. We have tried to comfort you. We have done everything. And then when you get a disease like cancer or diabetes or kidney failure, heart disease, you know, and you don't have Jesus and you feel so angry because he allowed you to get that disease. Well, I've been going back and forth for tests. I didn't say nothing about it because it's mine and God's business. But I never blamed God for what was going on in my body. I'm ready to go. If he wants to take me right now, I'm ready to go. But I know he's not. I got too much work out there to do. Too many more souls to win. I've just got to stay and win another soul. I've got to help somebody to reach Jesus. But anyways, I guess it's been 35 minutes. So we'll go ahead and close. I love you guys. I wouldn't preach to you if I didn't love you. I would give this up. But just like Jeremiah, I say I'm not going to speak anymore because I don't feel like anybody's listening. That's how Jeremiah felt. And he said, I'm not going to preach anymore. And he said, but I couldn't help it. It was like a fire shut up in my bones. I have to get that word out. I have to get that word out because God convicts me of it and says, you've got to tell them. If you don't tell them, who's going to? Not everybody on here goes to church. Not everybody on here knows someone that can witness to them and tell them about Jesus. But I'm so thankful for the ones that get on here and listen to me. Whether you believe me or not. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, help us. Help us to come to you, God. Help us to believe. Help us to have a personal relationship with you, God, please. Jesus made a way for that door.
And I said, no, I don't want to know about Jesus now. I want to know why he had to come to this place and die such a terrible death for me. I wanted to know why. And I found out why. Because there's nothing but rebellion, 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 wickedness, ungodliness, disobedience. You know, we don't respect anything or anybody anymore. It's just a shame to see the world the way that it is. This is the way the world was when I was out on the streets. You know, I didn't recognize anything because I didn't care. You know, all I cared about was my next fix. Just give me some more drugs. That's all I care about. But since I've been saved for 29 years, I've noticed how the changes. Three generation it changes, it changes, it changes, and our kids get farther and farther away from God. The kids that worship God, that they even know God, that they know him personally. I don't know, but I sure hope that you would. If you never accepted Jesus into your heart and you want to accept him right now, then I pray that you pray this prayer of faith. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord. I'm asking you to help me, Lord. Search my heart for all the wickedness that is inside of it. Reveal it to me, Lord, that I may pray for it to go away. God, please send your son into my heart and let him clean it up, Lord God, that I might be able to live for you. Don't let me be deceived by Satan, Lord. But help me to know the truth. Give me a desire to read the word of God that I might learn the truth and keep it and hide the word inside my heart that I might not sin against you, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God, help us today, Lord. God, I pray for this soul, the one that asked you to come into their hearts, God. Please be with them, Lord God. Bring conviction upon their heart. Every time they go back to that wicked sin, God, that ugly, ugly sin, I pray that you bring conviction upon them, Lord, and, and help them, Lord God, to, to draw away from it. Not to go towards it, God, but to run from it, Lord, to run to you, Lord. I love you, God. I thank you for this message. I thank you for this for the ones who have listened, God. And I thank you so much for the gift of salvation and eternal life through Jesus Christ, my Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Brenda being here with me, Lord. I love you. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If anybody prayed for the first time and just asked Jesus into your heart, I'm asking you to please get a hold of me and I will get you a Bible. I'm talking to the ones who just got saved. Um, they're not easy to get anymore. And they're so expensive. But I want someone who really wants a relationship with Jesus Christ to get a hold of me on messaging. And I will do my best to get you one. But I'm asking you. And then you need to get into church. You need to find a good church to go to. Our church is a good church. It's the Lighthouse Pentecostal Church in Ledbetter, Kentucky. But I'm telling you. Please, just get away from the lifestyle that you're at and let God give you a new lifestyle. Woo, I'm so happy being me. I love it. I love it. Anyways, God bless you. David said one time when I first got saved in the Bible, I read it said, uh, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I thought, wow, that sounds pretty conceited because <laughs> you know, I didn't know. But now I say the same thing. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm so thankful that God has put conviction in my heart. He has done so many things to keep me close to him. When I go through a, a trial or something, I feel like it's because he wants me to get closer, draw closer to him. And he can put his arms around me and say, this is what I wanted, Alicia. I just wanted to hold you. I just wanted to rock you. I just wanted you to bring your troubles to me. And I'm so thankful that I could do that. And so can you. God bless you. Hope to see you next week.